the rendition of Sari Jahan Se Acha by Ms. Deepthi Mathur of the High Commission of India has set the tone for the celebration of our 73rd Republic Day. It is my privilege to welcome you all to this virtual celebration of India's 73rd Republic Day here in Canada. I'm Shefali Adhikari, and on behalf of the Indian High Commission in Ottawa, I invite you to join me for the next hour for an amazing and colorful cultural journey. We begin with the national anthems of Canada and India. The beautiful and uplifting rendition of O Canada, the national anthem of Canada, has been performed by Upadhyay sisters. India's national anthem, Janadana Mana, was written by Nobel laureate and national poet Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. <laughs> beautiful rendition of the national anthems. It is my privilege now to invite the High Commissioner of India, Mr. Ajay Basaria, to deliver his welcome address. Mr. Basaria has been the High Commissioner to Canada since March 2020 and is one of the senior most diplomats of India. Educated at St. Stephen's College, Indian Institute of Management and Princeton University, Mr. Basaria was India's High Commissioner to Pakistan, Ambassador to Poland and Lithuania before coming to Ottawa. A Russian speaker, he has served as Joint Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs and at Indian missions in Berlin and Moscow. He also served as Staff Officer to India's Prime Minister, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, and has had a stint with the World Bank in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to welcome India's High Commissioner, Mr. Ajay Basaria, to make his remarks. Thank you. Namaskar. Distinguished Chief Guests, Honorable Melanie Jolie, Foreign Minister of Canada, Honorable Anita Anand, Minister of National Defense, Honorable Erin O'Toole, Leader of the Official Opposition, Honorable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, Honorable Jason Kenney, Premier of Alberta, His Worship Jim Watson, Mayor of Ottawa, Senator Peter Byrne, Mr. Chandra Arya, Member of Parliament from Nepal, 
Mary France Lalon, Member of Parliament from Orleans, Mr. Goldie Hyder, President and CEO of the Business Council of Canada, Mr. Victor Thomas, President and CEO of the Canada India Business Council, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to welcome you for these virtual celebrations of India's 73rd Republic Day. We planned a large in-person event in Ottawa, but the pandemic continues to challenge our planet and we are forced to go virtual once again. Thank you for joining us today. We have in store for you a slice of India's colourful diversity. These celebrations are special. They mark the 75th year of India's independence and are part of the 75 weeks of celebration, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. This year is also significant for India-Canada ties. We celebrate 75 years of the establishment of diplomatic relations between our countries. India won its freedom from colonial rule on the 15th of August 1947. On the 26th of January 1950, India adopted its constitution to become a sovereign democratic republic. This constitutional framework not only created an architecture for democratic governance, but also a profound charter for empowerment of those on the margins of Indian society. We remember today the vision of our founding fathers for whom democracy was an act of faith. Mahatma Gandhi and other great leaders of the freedom movement trusted the innate goodness of ordinary Indians and believed that they must be given a stake in India's democratic evolution. We also remember with gratitude different strands of our freedom struggle, including the brave Indian National Army that posed a military challenge to the British Empire. It was led by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, whose 125th birth anniversary we also celebrate this month, and who gave us the energizing slogan of Jai Hind, India's journey across three quarters of a century has been a story of an unwavering commitment to democracy, accompanied by steady and then accelerated development. The rapid economic growth of recent years has been transformational. India's GDP has grown to close to $3 trillion, and the country is on course to achieve a $5 trillion economy in the next few years and a $10 trillion economy by the end of the decade. India's response to the ongoing public health crisis was comprehensive, with a strong focus on a vaccine program. Today, we can proudly say that the world's most extensive vaccination program is being run in our country with indigenous vaccines, vaccines manufactured in India. More than 1.6 billion doses have been administered. Close to 70% of India's vast population is vaccinated. Our online systems like COVID and digital certificates are setting new standards. The Omicron variant did strike us, but the vast reach of vaccines ensured its impact was mild in terms of hospital admissions. As the pharmacy of the world and the vaccine maker of the world, India is essential for meeting the demands of global medicines and vaccines. Our vaccine Maitri initiative of providing vaccines to the most needy friends across the world has shown our commitment and determination in working with all to end this scourge. The knowledge economy is critical to India's growth. The new India is a digital India, marked by the recognition that individual and national development are intimately connected to a citizen's ability to access digital and banking platforms. Today, 90% of Indians have a digital identity as we move towards universal coverage of internet and mobile connectivity, and of course, mobile banking. Pandemic times gave India the reason for deep structural economic reform across sectors. This is already showing results as India looks at growth of over 9% in 2022. Reforms, including production-linked incentives, have in particular energized India's manufacturing sector. Exports of manufactured goods are driving us to a target of exports worth $400 billion. India's digital transformation will be accompanied by a job-creating manufacturing revolution. Today, India is not just one of the world's largest economies, it is also one of the youngest.
almost half of India's population today is under the age of 26. This unique demographic holds the promise of making India a strong engine of the world economy. Investments are the most significant indicator of confidence. Even as the world reeled from COVID, India registered the highest ever annual foreign direct investment inflow of $82 billion in 2020 2021. These investors got handsome returns as India's digital and physical infrastructure drives created huge opportunities. The investor confidence extends to India's exploding startup sector. Studies of India's tech startup ecosystem are calling 2021 the year of the titans when 42 of India's over 80 unicorns were created. More than 2,250 of India's 60,000 plus startups were registered in the year 2021. These companies raised more than 24 billion US dollars in the year, a two-fold increase over pre-COVID levels, showing that much of India's tech innovation is now self-financed. India is also a vibrant voice for environmental security. Whether biodiversity or land neutrality, climate change or waste recycling, organic farming or biogas, energy conservation or clean energy transition. Today, India is the only country in the G20, which is well on its way to achieving its climate goals promised in Paris 2015. At the recent COP, our Prime Minister set India on the course of a zero emission future by 2070. The world's democracies, especially those in the Indo-Pacific region, need to come together to defend the rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific which flows from the cherished democratic values of respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of nations, peaceful resolution of disputes through dialogue and an adherence to international norms. India and Canada as Indo-Pacific democracies and G20 economies are natural partners. As democracies, we share similar values, similar visions. India, like Canada, believes in a strong multilateral rules-based international structure. India and Canada also share similar views on the reforms of the existing international multilateral organizations to reflect current global realities. The pandemic has served as a rude reminder that global governance institutions built to tackle problems of the 1940s needed to be upgraded for our century. An expansion of the permanent membership of the Security Council is a necessary ingredient of this reform. India welcomes the articulation by Canada of a vision of the Indo-Pacific, as was stated by the Governor General during the recent speech from the throne. India had called for adopting a One Earth, One Health approach at the G7 summit, where India was a guest. We need meaningful partnerships sharing of advanced technologies, collaboration in vaccine and pharmaceutical production, capacity building, transparency in health information. Both India and Canada have national programs to build back greener and are collaborating more closely to our mutual benefit. At India's invitation, Canada has joined the Coalition for Disaster and Resilient Infrastructure, CDRI, an initiative taken by India to build global partnerships in creating infrastructure that is resilient to climate change and other natural disasters. Our collective efforts can undoubtedly redefine the quality of infrastructure and the nature of urbanization. They can make agriculture more sustainable and harness the blue economy more seriously. India and Canada have coordinated closely during the course of the pandemic. We were there for each other, whether it was to transfer stranded citizens, supply vaccines, or ship oxygen plants. Our leaders have consulted each other and met on the margins of international needs. Our trade ministers have discussed comprehensive economic partnership agreement. The 1.6 million strong Indian diaspora provides a special dimension to our relations. Indo-Canadians have excelled in Canada in every sphere and provide a unique dynamism to Canadian society. 
we have to date 19 Indo-Canadians in Canada's parliament, three of them cabinet ministers. Canada has emerged as a preferred destination for India students with over 230,000 enrolled in various Canadian institutions. They bring in over $6 billion every year in tuition fees alone. Another 600,000 Indians are living and working in Canada, contributing positively to the Canadian economy. The recent tragedy in Manitoba, where four persons froze to death, has shocked us in India as in Canada. We will collaborate closely with Canadian authorities in investigating this heartbreaking incident. In the longer term, we need to together ensure that immigration and mobility remain a secure, legal and happy experience for Indian citizens who choose to become future workers and residents of Canada. We need to creatively work out solutions like mobility agreements and joint investigations into human trafficking or smuggling. India and Canada have both been victims of international terrorism. Canada's worst terror attack came in the form of the bombing of an Air India flight in June 1985, which killed 268 Canadian citizens. India and Canada share common views on the need for strong, concerted action against global terrorism and for curtailing terror financing. Today, we collaborate closely in the area with robust exchanges between our security experts. The economic component of the relationship is slowly emerging as the driver of our partnership. Since 2015, year on year, our bilateral trade has increased almost 25% to reach more than $12 billion. Canada's investments into India has grown tenfold to reach $55 billion in the last five years. In the course of this decade, India will become a more dynamic, a friendlier business destination. India's transformation will also mean it plays the role of a critical engine of growth for the global economy. India will be very much a part of more reliable and resilient supply chains that the post-COVID world requires. International cooperation, especially among businesses, will be very much a key to the better world that we all seek. India's rise will be peaceful, good for the global economy and positive for global democracy. We see strong areas of convergence that will sustain this natural partnership and add the strategic element to the India-Canada strategic partnership. We have great potential to enhance bilateral cooperation in several areas, including energy security, action on the environment, fostering greater technology and knowledge partnerships. Canada and India are poised to collaborate on new and emerging technologies, ranging from artificial intelligence to nuclear sciences to health and medicine. Building on the existing collaboration in the development of pharmaceutical products, the two countries can explore collaboration in dealing with pandemics, given Canada's R&D capabilities and India's complementary production capacities. India sees Canada playing an important part in the manifest destiny of humanity. As the largest democracy in terms of population, India would welcome a sister democracy, the largest in the world in size, to join hands on the global stage. Cheers for the India-Canada friendship. Jai Hind. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, High Commissioner, for those remarks. We are now honored to have the Honorable Melanie Jolie, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Canada, as our chief guest this evening. Honorable Melanie Jolie has been member of the House of Commons since 2015 and earlier served as Minister of Economic Development, Minister of Tourism, Official Languages and La Francophonie, and Minister of Canadian Heritage. A brilliant lawyer, Madam Jolie is now the face of Canada's feminist foreign policy and has already been jet-setting the globe as she helps expand Canada's diplomatic imprint across the world. We expect India-Canada relations attain new heights under her leadership and are delighted to have her message this evening. Presenting Honorable Melanie Jolie, 
Canada's Minister for Foreign Affairs. It's an honor to join the many Canadian friends of India for today's virtual celebration on India's Republic Day. Thank you, High Commissioner Bissaria, for this very kind invitation. Merci pour l'invitation, Monsieur le Haut Commissaire. Canada extends its heartfelt congratulations to the people of India on the 73rd anniversary of their republic and constitution. We can be proud of the history that exists between India and Canada. It is deeply rooted in our shared democratic values. Our cultural, political and trade connections continue to grow and will flourish in the coming year. At the heart of our long-standing friendship are strong people-to-people -people ties. More than 1.4 million people of Indian descent call Canada home. Chez nous, plus de 1.4 million de Canadiens sont d'origine indienne. It is impossible to imagine Canada's economy, politics, sports, arts, culture, and cuisine without the many contributions of Indo-Canadians. They have played a central role in shaping a stronger, fairer, and more inclusive country. I acknowledge that it has been an extraordinarily difficult time for our citizens both here in Canada and in India. I would like to commend the government of India on its vaccination campaign, which after one year has successfully administered over 1.5 billion vaccine doses. This is a truly remarkable achievement. Canada and India will continue to work together to ensure the health and safety of our people and to mitigate the economic impacts of the pandemic. This most recent cooperation has deepened and expanded our already robust bilateral relationship. I'm immensely proud of what we have achieved together over the years. This includes our economic partnership, which is rapidly approaching $80 billion in value. India is one of Canada's fastest growing economic partners, and Canada now ranks as one of India's top sources of foreign investment. But our relationship is even more robust than our bilateral trade and commercial ties. In particular, we're fighting the global challenge of climate together. We're also expanding ties in our growing partnership in higher education. Before the pandemic, there was a five-fold increase in the total numbers of Indian students coming to Canada since 2013. As of 2021, more than 60 Canadian universities have in-country representatives in India. Canadian educational institutions continue to build new and exciting partnerships and expand and deepen their existing collaboration. We're also working together to explore opportunities in the Indo-Pacific. As Pacific-facing nations, we shared mutual interests in ensuring the peace, stability, and prosperity of the region. Canada and India will continue to work together to bolster diplomatic and regional stability, trade and economic connectivity, and of course, sustainability. In 2022 and beyond, we will continue to work together to strengthen these bonds and make a safer, more prosperous world for everyone. So on today's India's Republic Day, we are reminded of the importance of strengthening our ties and forging new ones in the years ahead. Aujourd'hui, c'est un jour important, alors célébrons ensemble. I wish you a very happy Republic Day to all Indians. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for the gracious remarks. The Honorable Anita Ami is the Federal Minister of National Defense. A member of Parliament from Oak Green, Minister Anand has previously been the Minister for Public Services and Procurement. She's a scholar, lawyer, researcher, and mother of four children. Hailing from Nova Scotia, she studied at the Queen's University, University of Oxford, Dalhousie University, and University of Toronto. Friends, we now welcome Minister Anita Anand to address the gathering. Thank you. Namaste. Hello. 
My name is Anita Anand, the Member of Parliament for Oakville and the Minister of National Defence. January 26 is India's Republic Day, and as a Canadian of Indian origin, I wanted to take a moment and wish you well on India's Republic Day. This is a day where we will all sing Jana Ganamana and we will remember the history and independence of the Republic of India. All my very best to you on India's Independence Day. Namaste. India is home to a vast and vibrant culture, varied in its many manifestations across the country, with an immense variety of performing arts, be it music, dance, or drama. We now present for you some glimpses of this great cultural richness. Bharatanatyam is one of the oldest classical dance forms from southern India, rich in rhythmic calculations and equally so in expressions and musical nuances. We present you a performance by Ms. Malvika Venkatsubhya, a renowned Bharatanatyam dancer, choreographer, and an art educator. She is the founder and artistic director of Natyam Dance Academy in Edmonton and Calgary. Her works have been presented at many prestigious venues in Canada, US, UK, and India. She is the recipient of several awards, including Cultural Diversity Arts Awards from Edmonton Arts Council, Konar Pritya Ratna, and Natya Saradi titles. Ms. Malavika presents Sandhya Tanda, set against the glow of twilight sky at Pradosh or dusk. Shiva dances Sandhya Tanda, accompanied by his beloved wife, Parvat Nandini's Melifluous vocals and Ganpati's orchestra. Please enjoy. <laughs> Para mí 
ಮಲಗಿದೆ ಮದಳೆ ಕೋ ಕೋ ಸಕದಿ ಮಿತರಿ ಜಡೋ ಕೋ ಪ್ರತಿಧ್ವನಿ International Trade and Minister of Veteran Affairs, while in opposition has served as Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs. Having served in Royal Canadian Air Force for 12 years, it is not surprising he is a founding member director of True Patriot Love Foundation, a charity serving veterans and military families across Canada. Friends, please welcome Honorable Erin O'Toole, Leader of Opposition. Thank you. Today marks India's 73rd Republic Day, and I'd like to bring greetings to the Canadian virtual celebration. Canada is home to a large and vibrant Indo-Canadian community. Canada and India have enjoyed historic bilateral relations. Former Conservative Prime Minister Stephen Harper worked to build deeper economic ties with Indian Prime Ministers Singh and Modi. We grew our trade relationship to record highs and became stronger partners. But this critical relationship has been neglected under Justin Trudeau. Conservatives will restore ambition in Canada's relationship with India. 
will aim to work closer with India on trade, on technology and on diplomacy in the Indo-Pacific region. We'll continue to pursue freer trade and expand on Canada's strengths as one of the world's largest investors in India. On behalf of Canada's Conservatives, I wish all Indo-Canadians a happy Republic Day. Honourable Premier of Ontario, Douglas Robert Ford Jr. is a dedicated community leader, businessman and a popular leader in Ontario representing Etobicoke North. Public service is something natural to Doug Ford, three generations of Ford family having served Ontario in elected positions. A dynamic leader, he is at the forefront in the fight against COVID here in Ontario. Dear friends, please welcome our Premier, the Honourable Doug Ford. Thank you. Hi everyone, I want to wish all Indians across Ontario and around the world a happy Republic Day. Ontario is proud to have a vibrant Indian community that we can continue to celebrate and who are vital contributors to our province's success. This past year, we have faced many challenges, but it has also shown us the importance of celebrating life's gifts. Whether it was donating hot meals or dropping off PPE at hospitals, Ontario's Indian community has stepped up in so many ways and have shown the true Ontario spirit. I want to thank you for everything you're doing, and I hope everyone has a great celebration. Trained in classical music, the Upadhyay sisters, Hanshul and Girinandini, are prominent and sought-after artists among the Indo-Canadian community in Ottawa. Renowned for soulful renditions today, they present the touching patriotic song with the lyrics, Avatar. Lappe aati hai dua ban ke tamanna meri Zindagi shumma ke surat ho khuda ya meri Lappe aati hai dua ban ke tamanna वतन वतन मेरे आबाद रहे तो है वतन वतन मेरे आबाद रहे तो वतन वतन मेरे आबाद रहे तो मैं जहां रहूं जहां मैं याद रहे तो Jason Kenny, the 16th and current Premier of Alberta needs no introduction. A prominent public personality and politician, he has distinguished himself from the time he was elected to the House of Commons in 1997. 
when he was only 29. He has been a federal minister for multiculturalism, minister for citizenship and immigration, the longest serving minister in that position, minister of defense and minister for employment and social development. His contributions in making Canada a welcoming country for immigrants are singularly significant. Dear friends, let us welcome Premier Jason Kenney. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, to you and the High Commission of India here in Canada for the opportunity to join you in this virtual celebration of India's National Day of Constitution Day to celebrate the signing of the Constitution of the Democratic State of India in 1950. Since then, modern India has grown to be one of the world's great powers, uh, economically, strategically, culturally, in so many ways, drawing on a millennia-old culture of incredible diversity and sophistication, one of the cradles of civilization. Canada has benefited enormously from the contributions of over a million uh, Desis, of uh, NRIs, of uh, Indians who came to Canada to build new lives here and brought with them remarkable education, skills, ambition, work ethic, uh, and so much more. And we've been enriched by the diversity of India here in this pluralistic country. The ties that bind Canada and India are so profound. Obviously, those human ties and very important commercial connections, but shared values as Commonwealth countries with parliamentary democracies, with English as a la common language, uh, and so much more. And that is why I have always believed that India should be the linchpin for Canada's broader relationship with the Asia Pacific region. Something I focused on so much in my time in the federal parliament and cabinet. And so thank you, Your, your uh, Excellency, to you and your team and the High Commission and consulates across the country for all that you do to uh, make concrete this critically important relationship. I can tell you that uh, as leader of the opposition in Alberta, I was delighted to do a, a visit to India, my sixth visit uh, in the fall of 2018. And I look forward to getting back as soon as we can, as soon as COVID clears and the skies are open uh, to once again renewing my many friendships in the world's largest democracy. Happy uh, National Day, Happy Constitution Day. Bharat Mataki. His Worship Jim Watson, the mayor of Ottawa, has dedicated most of his illustrious career to public service in Canada's capital and Ontario, having held several senior positions in Ontario provincial government. On numerous occasions, he has acknowledged the dynamism and the energy of Indo-Canadian community in the development of Ottawa City. It is a pleasure to have him with us today. Dear friends, Please welcome His Worship, Mayor Jim Watson. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jim Watson, Mayor of the City of Ottawa. Bonjour, ici Jim Watson, Maire de la Ville d'Ottawa. And it's my pleasure to wish the High Commission of India and Ottawa, the Indo-Canadian community in Ottawa, and all others a very special virtual celebration of India's 73rd Republic Day on January 26, 2022. We live in a strong and vibrant multicultural city and events like this bring people together and help to bond the community as you share your culture and your heritage. Despite not being able to gather in person this year, this is a time when you can all recognize the contributions of people from India throughout the history of Ottawa and the world. On behalf of the City of Ottawa, I wish all those celebrating uh, a very special and enjoyable 73rd Republic Day. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. We now present for you a dance performance which interprets the classical Bharatanatyam to the famous song Vande Mataram by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee. The dance has been choreographed by our very own Ottawa-based Miss Aishwarya Vijay Kumar, who is currently in Doha and is joining us from there for this program. Thank you.
on Foreign Affairs and International Trade as our next speaker. A career diplomat before becoming Senator in 2018, representing Ontario, he has held various senior positions in multilateral diplomacy dealings with Organization of American States, 
G8 and G7 summits. Friends, please welcome Senator Peter Fogel. As chair of the Senate Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Trade, and as a friend of India, I'm very pleased to join this virtual celebration of India's 73rd Republic Day. There is much that binds our two great democracies, both bilaterally and the work that we can do together across the planet. To High Commissioner Bizarria and his talented team, congratulations, and let's get going on that free trade agreement. Honorable Chandrakant Chandra Arya is our very own Member of Parliament from Nepal. Well known to us in Ottawa as a successful business leader, he's a strong pillar of the Indo-Canadian community and a doting husband and father. His devotion to improving and modernizing the city of Ottawa is widely acknowledged. Friends, it is a pleasure to invite Honorable Chandra Arya to address us next. Thank you. Namaskar. I'm Chandra Arya, Member of Parliament for Nipiam. It is my pleasure to greet you all on the 73rd Republic Day India celebration. Like me, there are 28 million people of Indian heritage all across the world who are proud of India's achievement during the last 73 years of it becoming the Republic and the last 75 years of its independence. I am proud to say that I am a product of India. India invested in millions of people like me by providing education with which we have traveled all corners of the world and achieved success in all spheres of life, whether it is business, academics, politics or technology. We are also proud to see the achievements of India from poverty reduction to becoming an economic superpower from eradicating polio to mastering new technologies, from space technologies to connected technologies. I don't need to emphasize that India and Canada are natural partners. The potential to further strengthen the relationship between Canada and India are great. India, with its economic strength, its location, and its growing influence in international affairs makes it strategically important to Canada. With the global economy moving towards a knowledge-based economy, it is appropriate to see innovation-led new India strategy. With 46 unicorns in 2021, it shows significant economic changes in India. I am glad to know there is a Canada connection to the first unicorn last year. Canada has already invested substantially in India and there is still much more potential for trade and investment. We, the 1.8 million people of Indian heritage in Canada, we have a role to play to deepen the economic, trade, political and the security relations between our two democracies. Dhanyawad. Thank you, Honorable Chandra Arya, for the inspiring remarks. Honorable Murray Friends Lalonde has been a member of Parliament since 2019 and serves on the Standing Committees for Veteran Affairs as well as Official Languages. Before moving to federal politics, she served as Minister of Francophone Affairs and Minister of Government and Consumer Services at the Provincial Parliament of Ontario. We have the honour to invite Honourable Marie-France Lalonde, Member of Parliament from Orleans, as our next speaker. Thank you. Hello everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the High Commissioner of India to Canada, Ajay Bissaria, for inviting me. It is an honor to be among you all today to celebrate India Republic Day. This day marks the 73rd anniversary of the Constitution of India coming into effect, officially making India a republic. I'm so grateful to the Hindu-Canadian community in Canada, in Ottawa, and especially in my riding of Orléans. 
Hindu Canadians have had a tremendous impact on our country and bring so much life and light to our lives. Well, I know that a virtual celebration is not what we all wanted. It is more important than ever for us to help keep each other safe and healthy by remaining vigilant and reducing contacts. Hopefully, we will all be able to gather and celebrate this important day together next year. Nevertheless, the High Commissioner of India has organized a fantastic virtual event that is sure to be filled with exciting presentation which will showcase the richness and the vibrancy of Indian culture. It is also an incredible opportunity to reflect on the immense contributions of the Indian diaspora in Canada, but also across the world. I must say, of all the activities that are planned for tonight, I'm most looking for the delicious food. Thank you, merci, and have a wonderful evening. We now present dance performance in Kathak, another ancient classical dance from the northern India, and represents the syncretic cultural finis of Indian art forms. Presented as a tribute to legendary Kathak maestro, the late Padma Vibhushan Pandit Birju Maharaj. This performance is brought to you by Upasna, the spirit of dance, professional dance company. Choreographed by Guru Savita Sharma and performed by Karina Datta Karmarkar, a very talented artist from the Indo-Canadian community in Ottawa. The tribute piece features a beautiful tumri composed by late Pandit Maharaj himself, celebrating the timeless love stories of Radha and Krishna evoked by Upasta's captivating Katha choreography. Graceful and emotive, Karina's performance is the perfect balance of technique and process. Presenting Bhari Bhari.
Canada represents the best of what Indo-Canadians represent. As President of the Business Council of Canada, he articulates the sentiments and voice of some of the largest Canadian corporates and businesses. As our commercial partnership takes center stage in India-Canada bilateral relations, we look forward to hearing from Mr. Heather. Friends, please welcome our next speaker, Mr. Goldie Heather. Happy 73rd Republic Day. Thank you, High Commissioner, for the opportunity to be with you today. There are almost 200 countries in the world, and of all of the places that I could be from, I feel so fortunate to be able to call India and Canada home. I represent over 170 of Canada's leading CEOs, many of whom have a long-standing presence in India. Now, there's a special bond between Canada and India. In a complicated world, two vibrant democracies like ours have a responsibility, a duty, to show the world what's possible when we embrace the rule of law, equality, diversity, inclusivity, and sustainability. Things, I assure you, are what responsible business leaders around the world value and look for in making decisions on where to do business. It's why our pension funds and companies like Brookfield, Fairfax, Manulife, Sun Life, and so many others are looking to continue to grow their footprint in India. Meanwhile, leading Indian brands like Tata Consulting Services are establishing their own standing here in Canada. In fact, only last week, TCS was announced as the title sponsor of the Toronto Waterfront Marathon. Our people-to-people -people ties run deep. India is the largest source of immigrants to Canada. Indian students account for 35% of international students making them the largest source country. The contributions of the Indian diaspora can be felt in all walks of Canadian life, from the cabinet table, to academic leadership, to public health, to philanthropy, and yes, to business people as well, who are leading the way in helping make Canada a better place. There is no question that as we mark India's 73rd Republic Day, we do so knowing that it is poised for transformational and tremendous growth. As we work towards deepening our trade ties, I want you to know that Canadian business leaders look to India with great optimism. We feel that when it comes to India, you are just getting started. And the best, they say, is yet to come. Jay Hind. Our next speaker, Mr. Victor Thomas, CEO of Canada India Business Council, has been a force multiplier in promoting India-Canada commercial relations. Mr. Thomas has made his mark by embellishing the profile of CIBC and enhancing its contribution towards India-Canada relations. We are delighted to welcome Mr. Victor Thomas. Good evening. My name is Victor Thomas, the President and CEO of the Canada India Business Council, representing members from the private sector, of course, between Canada and India. Growing up, January 26th was always a big day in my family. One, it was my younger sister's birthday, and my Indian mother would say, all of India is celebrating. And of course, secondly, it is Republic Day of India. It is a great privilege to say a few words during this special ceremony. 73 years ago today, the constitution came into effect. It is easy to take this for granted, but amongst the 12 Asian countries that gained independence soon after World War II, only three constitutions have survived. India, of course, being one of them. Over the past seven decades, the constitution has lived and breathed as a truly living document with 104 amendments, which is one of its greatest strengths, flexibility. The changes were made to uphold fundamental rights. The fundamental rights to infrastructure, rights to rational taxations, rights against corruption, rights to fair labor laws, and rights to an educated and skilled workforce. The Constitution highlights the importance of business and provides stability by enshrining it also as a fundamental right. Since becoming a sovereign nation and the world's largest democracy, India is a resilient country rocketing up the next decade and a half, be forecast as the third largest economy in the world. Today, India is seen as a vibrant nation with a young population and an increasingly business-friendly climate. 
And on this Republic Day, there are some things to highlight between our two countries. Canada is a national partner sharing our common language, democracy, and hosting one of the largest Indian diasporas per capita in the entire world. Our two-way trade is at 10.5 billion, and our Canadian portfolio investment is over $63 billion into India. As of this month, the majority of our provinces now have trade offices in India. Canada hosts over 230,000 Indian students in our Canadian post-secondary programs. Canada currently ranks fourth in the Global Startup Ecosystem Index, and now one in every 10 tech unicorns born globally are from India. There were 44 unicorns alone in 2021, and there are already two more in 2022. Together, our nations can connect, help startups and investors and companies create a robust cross-border tech ecosystem. Together, we can unlock energy solutions, reimagine the agriculture value chain, and collaborate on shared security and increase two-way trade and investment. Now is the time for Canada to enhance its strategic relationship. The past two years have highlighted the potential risks of being dependent solely on pre-existing supply chains. India will play a key part in the transformation of the global economy in the decades ahead. Just as the Indian constitution adapted and reformed to reflect the changing society, Canada needs to move from an Asia Pacific worldview to an Indo-Pacific strategy with India being central to it. We at the Canada India Business Council strongly support the idea of an early harvest Canada India free trade agreement. Thank you to the Indian High Commission and His Excellency Ajay Basaria for bringing us together virtually as well as our two Indian Consul Generals as we celebrate India's 73rd Republic Day. And on behalf of the Canada India Business Council and our members, happy Republic Day and thank you so much. On behalf of the High Commission of India, I thank all of you our chief guests, our guests of honor, and our special invitees for joining us in these celebrations this evening. We also thank all the artists and performers who despite the restrictions of pandemic, worked together to put this cultural show. Thank you very much. Namaskar.